Hi everyone, your chess puzzler here. And just like every single time, welcome to the channel. I need to go straight to Greece because have I got news for you. It's all about two players who you don't want to play against. But what happens when these two players play each other? One is the best chess player in the world and the other is Liren, Ding Liren, who right now has an impressive record. If I'm not wrong, he's yet to be beaten under classical conditions for over 85 games. Last time he drew against Wang Hao and though he has two draws and two wins in Greece, how do you think Carlsen fares? Magnus has one win and three draws and however you put it, both are unbeaten so today we may want to consider this as a true clash of the titans. Ding Liren right now is flying. Not only he has reached an elite status, but you only need to look at his recent game against Svitla. Let's see how he did against Carlsen, with the world champion having the white pieces. Magnus was started with an e for opening, and through this sequence of moves, Carlsen moves away from the so-called Italian and Spanish structures and brings out the knight for a change. After Ding Liren got his knight out too, any idea what Carlsen does? He went for the old-fashioned scotch and what we have is a scotch for knight's variation. When these two guys came off, Liren goes it very aggressive. He got the bishop to pin this knight and when both knights came off, following the main line of this variation, bishop d3 to cover for e4. And if we had any doubt about how aggressive Ding Liren was, or is, we can have no illusions now. d5. When this guy was removed, Ding could have taken, but he bypasses. He first castled, and when Carlsen did the same, it was time for this guy to come off. Carlsen here said, okay, Mr. Ding Liren, you can pin my knight, but I can also pin yours too. And the second pin right now is just that bit more important than yours. C6 got the queen out too to increase the pressure on this knight. But how do you normally proceed here? Ding came up with this bishop move. And when H3 materialized, Ding had enough of this pin and pursued Mr. Bishop. Take in would have been fine, but Carlsen was not willing to give up his bishop for this and returned him to this spot. Okay, maybe he was willing to trade, but it had to be an eye for an eye. And this time, it was Ding Liren who rejected. He in turn activated his rook, and when Carlsen covered, rook b4. And what a clever resource this was. Carlsen has either knight moved to e2 to cover, or he must trade. He went for the latter, and when both bishops disappeared, it was Carlsen, another person, who lined up his rook on the open file. a5 led to the other rook 2 to line up on d1, and we have all the signs of a very bloody battle. When the bishop moved into d7, Carlsen came up with this queen move, and this is some very clever response. He hoped Ding Liren to have gone to attack the queen. And when the queen finds this spot on a7, Ding Liren for sure has a problem. Ding saw this little detail. And though he moved his rook, this is where he placed him on. So what is the idea both Carlsen and Ding Liren have? We already speculated on Carlsen's move. And queen to a7 it was in the end. But this did not seem to have bothered Ding Liren. What do you think he did here and why? Do you want to have a go? Let's try it because this was some tremendous response. So here we go in two, one and pause. Rook to h4. And with this threat of ripping open the entire kingside, Carlsen was forced to defend. And how does he defend? He lifted his rook to e3. And now when the queen returned to intercept Carlsen's big lady, both queens were retired in a flush. And by that I mean a flush. It took 
Carlson, I think, about 40 minutes to decide to trade this queen off. Carlson wants his bishop, as you do, and went for this knight move, which was the first step to getting to him. After c5, did I expect the knight to sneak into b6? I did, and yet Carlson had seen something else and went for it. What he did was this. He rips open his own king's side defense through this move. How does Ding Lira miss the obvious here is beyond me. All he needs is to take this guy on h3. And when the rook captures, boom, bishop takes, and this game is more or less finished. Okay, Ding Liren may have missed it, or saw this and ignored it. What he did was to go for the rook. And when the rook moved into this spot, was Carlsen in trouble? I think he was. I guess Ding Liren must have been upset with himself and tried to get things right this time around. So what he did, like you do, was this. He sacrificed his knight to get to the same result as before without handing over his own bishop. In fact, since Carlsen never took, because he would have been over and done with. This cannot be defined as a sacrifice, but an offer. What Carlsen did was this. He got the rook to line up on this open file, but when the knight returned to safety, this game is on fire. Carlsen does, after all, go after the bishop, but did this worry Ding Liren? Not the slightest. He moved his bishop into a stronger outpost because he is also now after this rook. Rook g3 got g5 rolling. And when the rook moved into this spot on e5, Carlsen was looking to remove c5. And if this guy falls, this is going to make things very hard for Ding Liren. But Ding Liren being on top of his game seemed to have had it all worked out. The funny thing about this position is that even Carlsen does not move his rook. Why? Well, he can't even move him if he wanted. Challenging this rook on h4 is going to drop this guy on h3. And you try and tell me how Carlsen is going to crawl out of this one when the rook comes in with a check. There is a way, in fact, not to get mated, but Carlsen would have lost too much material to even survive this one. So, believe it or not, Carlsen let the rook standing and went for this bishop move. And the thing is, if you now go to remove this rook after f recaptures, okay, it seems this rook is going to fall too, but there is a way out of this one if you try hard. The first hint is here, f6, but whatever you do, black is much better as a result of this development. But even here, Ding Liren did not take the rook, but wanted to free up his own rook first. So what he did was to move him out. But when Carlsen got his own rook to challenge the opposing rook, this is what Ding Liren does. A very beautiful and excellent response. Bishop to f3, and he seems to see it all. After rook takes and knight recaptures, the knight made his way into d7, and Carlsen was determined to dismantling up the entire queen side. Ding Liren pushed on, and when both these guys came off, they came a5-2. And a more fiery game than this, you could not get at human level. Both Ding Liren and Magnus Carlsen are working out if their own kings are safe, and if so, are they able to find that mating pattern? So the first thing to consider is whether you can trap the opposing king, and if so, how? Ding Liren went for it first. Once he saw no real danger on his own king, this is what he did. He got the rook into b4, leaving only one spot for the king to escape to. Carlsen used it to get his king out from the first rank, but the party was about to get started, if it hadn't already, when the rook got himself into the first rank. Carlsen's response here was a rather surprising one. I expected him to get the king out, and this one g3 looked absolutely fine, and yet he bypassed. He backed off his own knight to this spot. A check on the king led to the king to move into g3, and when the bishop retreated, this game was close, very close. f3 got the rook to reroute, 
And what Ding Lirin is aiming for right now is this knight on e5. Carlsen reciprocated this attack, but when the rook moved in with another check, after this king move, Ding Lirin uses the knight to sneak in with another check. After the king moved back to the first rank, we know removing this guy in c2 is going to be the mother of all blunders. And understandably, Ding Liren does not engage here. He came in with another check. And if he wants, he can draw only by means of a perpetual. But I don't think Ding Liren was looking for a draw, but a way to finish off. King back to f1, led to this move monstrosity, and Carlson is desperately looking to find a way out. He went for this king move, and again, for this check, the king was squeezed all the way into the corner. Now, this seems all sorted, and Carlsen is, in fact, in a resignable position. Taking c2 is now a very viable option, and yet Ding Liren bypasses once again. Why didn't he remove this guy? Because it would have been impossible even for Carlsen to come out of this one in one piece. What he did, though, was this which I'm sure it is far inferior to what he could have done. He removed the knight, and when the bishop recaptured, this is the reason why you don't resign, because mistakes can be made as easily. Rook g3 was going to guarantee one of these two guys, so when Carlsen pushed on with h4, this check followed, and when the king moved out, Ding Liren grabbed h4. Carlsen returned this bishop to base, and the only reason, if you require an explanation, is to keep this rook hostage on the h file. But how well executed was this move when the knight can move out to get this rook back to life? Ding Liren activated his king and Carlsen being Carlsen grabs every single chance he finds. And if Ding Liren is punished by this, so be it. Remember, with Carlsen, you get only one chance, and if you miss it, you're on your own. Knight back to g6 has his scar on d4 covered, but you've got to keep an eye out on how to stop every single pass ball. At least for now, this knight move would allow the rook to free up, and this is just what Ding Liren wants. Once his rook is back in business, he can pick up the pace from here. Both players have plenty of time on their clocks, so we are not expecting them to blitz out any moves. They did already blitz out many of them, by the way. I think Carlsen has just about 47 minutes and Ding Liren has just under 31. Another way while staring at this position is that Ding Liren can in fact advance this guy to d3. And when he's captured, after knight g7, king f2 maybe, and king f6, may get Carlsen to come in with this. But after the king makes his way into e5, okay, this might look risky, but it is a possibility. Carlsen is really stretching this brain to be able to come out of this one in one piece. And no wonder this explains his apathy to move slower than he did. And finally, after 10 minutes and 18 seconds, he went for this, rook to c5, and hopes to be able to use the rook to push on with his pass pull. And right now, I'm sure Ding Liren is trying to work out if it would be wise to push on with d3 or go for any other move. I think he's much better off getting his rook back into the game, but I'm sitting here waiting until we see what he does. And yep, this is now confirmed. He replied with d3. And when Carlsen pushed on with this guy, and then of course he came off. And of course, again, when Carlsen captured this guy, who was so close to promotion, Ding Liren now sends his rook to arrest this guy. Carlsen pushed him on even further. And now the race starts of who is going to be able to reach the other side first. When Carlsen went for this rook move, there are two things that bug me. One is that Ding Liren not only is missing his winning chances, but two, if one person can turn things around, even when dead and buried, this will be the world champion himself. 
Okay, this is what happened here. I'm not sure if I mentioned this h5 push by Ding Liren, but if I didn't, this is what he did. Carlsen's rook to c5 got the king going, and through this repetition, Carlsen is one happy man because he escaped with murder. And again, a true champion like him is able, with his magnificent play, to return to the game from an otherwise lost position. Okay, Ding misses his chances, and when he gets to reflect on how easy Carlsen made it for him, he might be kicking himself. Let's hope he's not going to be kicking himself on the spot where he was injured when he fell off his bike. But seriously, this is not a game you cannot win with the way Carlsen played today. Okay, this was another brilliant game out the way. And this is another reason why you cannot resign prematurely. Even though you're losing, look at Carlsen. He found a way to escape punishment. And again, this is another good reason why you cannot compare human and engine games. With engines, you will not even get a chance, and I think many chess lovers know this. Okay, this was a very fortunate result for Carlsen, and a very unfortunate one for Ding Liren. I shall return to cover other important games, so until next time, this was your Chess Puzzler.